Is it high profile? Oh, yes. Very high. In the name of entertainment, they'll stop at nothing. Petrolheads, the new panel show, Sunday at 10 on BBC Two. Ben Fogel and James Cracknell's gruelling Atlantic challenge that almost claimed their lives through hell and high water in half an hour. Now it's survival of a different kind. Who'll make the semi-finals? MasterChef goes large here on BBC Two. MasterChef is back and the competition gets tougher. We're looking for that amateur who can make it to the top as a professional chef. Someone who can handle the pressure and still turn out great food. I'm ready for MasterChef to change my life. Two expert judges to decide who wins. There's only one in a thousand who's got what it takes. But I've got to win today. The prize, to work in a top restaurant. Cooking does not get tougher than this. Whoever wins this is going to change their life. I'm at Master Chef to win it. Master Chef is going large. This week's heats have produced four exceptional cooks. And our winner is... Naveen, Matt, Dean, David. Congratulations. But only one of them will make it through today's quarter-final. They have to produce an exceptional three-course meal that they've designed themselves. That is a plate of food of restaurant standard. They also have to show the judges that they have a good knowledge of ingredients. There's extra virgin. And they have to prove that they have a passion for food with a genuine commitment to changing their lives if they win. MasterChef, it's taken over my life. Oh, I want to change my life for the better. It really does come from my heart. I truly believe that I can be a MasterChef. It's an early start with all four contestants shopping for the ingredients for the afternoon cook-off. Free range, are they? Yeah, free range, yeah, from Hereford. Thanks very much. Where's your duck from? It's Suffolk Duck. Thanks very much. Their fate will be decided by the judges. Fruit and veg expert Greg Wallace. Quarter final day is hard. I don't know how they feel, but I get butterflies in my tummy. And top chef and restaurateur John Tarode. We've got four people who are really, really hungry for it, and four people who want to change their lives. So which of the four quarter-finalists will have what it takes to stay in the race? Only one of them can win. First up is digger driver Dean. Dean has to show me today that he can get some order in his life, that he's not just rushing around. In his heat, Dean aimed high with his dishes, but he panicked trying to finish them on time. Well, Dean, you've huffed and you've puffed and sweated and run around. Are you OK? I'm OK now. Today, he'll have to control his panic or he'll lose the opportunity he dreams of to move into a world of professional cooking. It is important to me to do well in this, to prove to myself I can actually do something more than digging roots. That's beautiful. Confident cook Paveen has produced impressive food. I have no criticism of this dish whatsoever. It's the only time I think you've ever said, ever, you could not find a single fault in that dish. She set her sights on the catering industry. Can she keep her standards up? I really want to go through to the next round. It really has made me want to go right through to the end. Paveen has really got to pull out all the stops today. The, the big smile won't be enough. Next up is David. He impressed the judges with his technical skill. Well, to finish the fish sauce off with the Bermanier, just to thicken it up a bit. Where do you learn terms like that? I've constantly got my head stuck in, in, in a book, John. But so far, he hasn't convinced them of his genuine love of food. That's where the passion is. He wants to win the competition, but for the competition's sake. Good conviction in my own abilities, and um, you know, I'm just, I just can't wait. I'm really looking forward to get cooking and uh, just to see if I can do it. He talks a good talk, and every so often he gets a little bit welled up, but I don't see that real love for food. Or could it be inventive cook Matt? In his heat, 
He intrigued the judges with his left field chocolate and beetroot cheesecake. I don't care how cleverly you can hide a beetroot. I wouldn't be impressed if you could manage to hide a pineapple in a shepherd's pie. We've got to have people who, who, who have changed. We've got to have people who are, who are out on the limb because without that, we don't have improvement. It adds something to the flavour of the chocolate, but nobody's sure exactly what. Matt will need to show the judges he can not only come up with inventive ideas, but deliver stunning food. Mass Chef's the most important thing I've ever been involved with. It's the, it's the most important thing. At 10 o'clock, the contestants make their way back from the shops to Master Chef HQ. They are about to face two tests of their knowledge and of their commitment. After this, one of them will be sent home before the final cook-off. The first task is to see if they have the advanced food knowledge expected of a Master Chef. I like this bit. Product identification, because I think that a good cook should know their ingredients. I've got a nice little tray of meat. I think those meats are relatively easy. These oils are particularly difficult, and they're going to have to smell some and taste some in order to tell what they are. This piece of dark meat should be easily identifiable by the fact that it is a dark meat, and it is darker than beef, because this is venison. And also, it has a very, very distinctive aroma. Hello, Paveen. Hello. Do you know what that is? Venison. Beef. Fillet. Part of a lamb. David doesn't start well with his ingredients. For him, the next task is crucial. It's the passion test. Each contestant has just one minute to convince the judges of their commitment to working with food. They're going to judge me on my passion and commitment to the world of food. I hope that they recognise that you know, it does come from the heart and that I, I am the real article. Good, David. Tell us why you want to win MasterChef, if you can. To work in the food industry, that would just make my, make my life, you know. It, it's something that I know I can offer. My love for food, it really does come from my heart. Um, I want to and I need to win MasterChef. Thank you, David. Very much. Thank you. OK, thank you. What we've got here is black truffle oil. People think you use pigs to get truffles out. Still do, mostly dogs now. If you get a hungry pig and he's got a big truffle in his mouth, the pig is likely to eat it. Sunflower, vegetable oil, nut oil. No, sorry. Truffle oil gets the better of Paveen. Can she regain her confidence and convince the judges to let her stay? I'm going to be honest, I'm going to talk from the heart. I'm going to portray to them how passionately I do feel about wanting this. You have seen my passion and determination and strength of character. Living, breathing, eating, dreaming MasterChef. It's taken over my life. One of my friends said to me, all the way, my friend, all the way. And that's what I want to do. I have that determination. Thank you very much. This is basically a beef chop, a clot de boeuf. And what's great about this beef is that you see it's nice and dark here, which means it's been hung. And if we turn that over, you'll see the lovely, fresh, wonderful meat in there. It's a ribeye beef. Aged steak. Four rib. Here's a rib of beef. Dean has panicked under pressure, but he's not flustered by today's ingredients. Now he has to convince the judges of his desire for a career in food. I'm just going to go in there and tell them how it is, you know. I'm not going to beef it up. This is honestly what I want to do. I've never really been much good at putting myself across, you know, when it matters. I suppose that's why I'm a digger driver and not a salesman. But I think I let myself down in the last round. You know, I made basic mistakes and uh, I really want a chance to prove myself. It all comes down to, you know, I want to change my life for the better. And if I can do that through cooking, you know, that would be amazing for me. Thank you. Th thank you. Cheers. This is Spanish extra virgin unfiltered olive oil. The difference between virgin and extra virgin olive oil is the amount of acidity. Only olive oil with less than 1% acidity can be called extra virgin. It's olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil. It's extra virgin. It's extra virgin. Inventive cook Matt knows his oils. Now can he convince John and Greg to let him cook this afternoon? 
I'm determined to give them a pitch <laughs> that they've never heard before. To go home today without cooking. I need to win MasterChef. My town needs me to win MasterChef. There is nowhere in my town to eat anything of any sort of decent standard. A bit more knowledge, a bit more experience, a bit more of the business skills, and you've got your MasterChef. Thank you, mate. Thank you. The pitch is over. Now the judges must decide who is going home. Anybody at the moment in your field staying in completely? Dean. Perfect. Okay. Dean. Agreed. He has the potential, he has the capability, and he really, really wants it. And he draws us in. Charisma, really important. He's got to be able to drag you in. And I believe every single word he tells me. OK, so that's a good start. Please give me Praveen. I think she can cook. I think she really cares. I think she's got the energy. I think she's got the potential. And I think she really, really wants it. All right, all right, fine. Dean and Paveen are staying. There's only one place left for either Matt or David. David is our technician. The question right now, does he love food? He is passionate and he loves it. He has just pushed himself so far, technically, he's forgotten the joy of eating. OK, can you teach him the joy of eating again? Can you reintroduce him to the wonderful world of eating his own food? Let's, let's go on to Matt. Let's go on to Matt. He's the most passionate one out of the lot. All I need to become MasterChef is a little bit more experience. That's what he said. I I'm really sorry. MasterChef is a long, long way from just a couple of little bits and pieces. I'm not convinced by what he said, but I am beginning to be convinced by how he said it. Now the contestants will find out who is going home. My sympathy is with the one of you that's going, because this was a really tough call. Three of you are going to cook for us, and then one of you is not. David, you're leaving us, I'm sorry. Really, really got that I can't cook my three course. It was, uh, I think it was a cracker. So be it. I do think we made a mistake, but then again, them other three must be fantastic. One of you is going to be a semi-finalist. You're going to cook like you've never cooked before. The three remaining contestants now face their most advanced cooking challenge yet. They have one hour and 20 minutes to produce a three-course meal that they have designed themselves. The standards expected at this stage are at a much higher level. The smallest of errors could cost them the competition. Paveen is a confident cook and is hoping to delight the judges with a simple but appetising menu. And your dishes are today? Ginger and lime tiger prawns, spiced blackened poussad. Which is a small chuck. Yep. With aubergine raita and date and chocolate phyllo sweeties. So it's like a big bonbon. Yeah. But you get a couple because dates are only that big, so... Tell me what you're hoping to get out of MasterChef. I'm hoping that what I believe in, my passion for food and catering, comes across and I'm given the opportunity to experience all the exciting things that I can only imagine about in the semi-final and the final. Levine has faith in her simple menu, but do the judges share her conviction? Pavine has got an interesting style. It sounds quite simple to me. Crispy prawns, delicious. If they're done subtly and done very, very well. It's simple, the puzzle, that simple. If you go for simplicity, though, it has to be absolutely spot on. There's nowhere to hide. You have 40 minutes. Factory inspector Matt is demonstrating his inventiveness by showcasing some novel food ideas in his menu. What three courses are you doing that's going to propel you into the semi-final? A uh, parsnip and rosemary soup with uh, pork crackling, sautéed rabbit with wild mushroom risotto, and a banana and raisin tart with ginger chocolate cream. Cool. I've never ever seen crackling served with soup, and it's a very, very nice idea. Because it's quite salty and the, the soup's quite creamy. I think they get to get together well. 
you got two types of banana here? Yes, uh, they're, they're the ones I bought today. I haven't used these before, but they're going to look good in the top, so I think I'm going to use these. Do you think it's a good idea to use a product that you've never used before when you could be a semi-finalist, Matt? Really? I'm not 100% whether I'm going to use them yet. I might eat one first and see what they're like. Good idea. <laughs> Good idea. Absolutely scrummy idea. You know what I'm doing this weekend for the kids? <laughs> Soup and pork crackling. But actually, I don't know if the rest of it will deliver that, because I start off that lovely comfort food, the rabbit I sort of get, the risotto by itself, brilliant, lots of mushrooms. I don't want it used as an accompaniment. It's too big a plate of food to go with three courses. It's too big. <laughs> In the last round, digger driver Dean panicked under pressure and raced against the clock to finish his two courses. Will he make the same mistake today? One of the things that you had a problem with, Dean, last time was timing. You, That's right. you, you almost blew your chances. Yeah. Do you think that you're going to have enough time today to get through? Yeah, I think so. I simplified my menu today. For my starter, I'm doing dressed crab with avocado. Main? For my main, going with lamb with braised fennel and a Madeira sauce. And for my dessert, vanilla poached pears with sweetened mascarpone. I've watched you work over the period of time that I've known you, and I've never, ever seen you so nervous. You know, there's a lot riding on it today. And after the mistakes of the last round, you know, I want to put it right. 25 minutes, you have. Dean has impressed me. Mr in, Digger. Yeah, Mr Digger, in that he said, I had to give myself time, I had to give myself time, so I've gone for a cold starter. I thought, hey, you're, you're picking this up really, really quick. The thing that worries me about him is the lamb and fennel. Lamb and fennel? Together? I don't know, that's a, that's a risky combination. Dean's not the only one worried about the deadline. Matt is also feeling the pressure. Wow, Matt, how long's this banana tart going to take? How long have you got left? Well, no, how long's it going to take? How long have you got left? You've got 13 minutes. 12 left. minutes. <laughs> you are playing close to the wind, aren't you? There's not much time left. Soon their dishes will be judged by John and Greg. You have five minutes. That's it, five minutes. Everything now rides on their three course meal. Only one of them can go through to the semi final. Matt's time is running out. There are just seconds left. That is it. Finished. Do not touch a plate. That's it. Dean finished in time and is serving a sophisticated starter of crab and avocado with rocket and spiced oil. Sweet crab, coriander, lovely oil, lovely textures, lovely and cool. The previous round, you got in a mess because you did a hot starter. You were sensible enough to go, I did a cold starter, and it's the first thing you did. Intelligent cookery. It's a very attractive plate of food. That is a plate of food of restaurant standard. Clever boy, Dino. Dean has set the bar high with his starter. Will his main course of lamb and fennel with Madeira sauce be equally impressive? I've never tasted fennel with lamb. No. No? I never want to taste fennel with lamb again. Because <laughs> lamb, rosemary, and your beautiful sweet sauce is, is, is enough for me. Here we go. Mm. The rich flavour, smoky flavour of the lamb. The sweetness of the Madeira, but then this really strange texture of the sloppy fennel thing. It, it's, it's just not there as far as texture goes. I like your sauce, but I think it should be thicker. Okay. I'm being really critical, Dean, because you're a quarter finalist. Uh, this is the only way to learn. You know, I, I'm not afraid to sort of take a fall as long as I take another step forward. Dean's fennel has spoiled his lamb dish. Now he's hoping to regain lost ground with his pear in sweet wine with mascarpone and vanilla. Oh, this sauce. That pear is releasing so much juice. This dessert is a thing of beauty. And I am very, very happy, man. Mmm. Lovely soft pear. 
too sweet for you, isn't it? I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit sweet for me and I think it's okay. I'll tell you why. I thought there was going to be huge amounts of lemon in that mascarpone. And I think that would have tipped the balance. You cook very well with very good ingredients. Tell me how you get exposed to food like this. I like eating out a lot. I don't enjoy drinking. So instead of going out and spending £100 on booze, I tend to go out and have a meal. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. If I was given a second chance, maybe I wouldn't have experimented with the fennel and the lamb. Maybe it wasn't a classic combination. The bean starter is lime and ginger prawns in breadcrumbs. Is it a starter or is it more of a sort of finger nibbly thing? I think starters can be finger nibbly things because what I like doing when I go out for dinner is sharing things. I like the flavour of the coriander, I like the flavour of the lime, I like the flavour of the ginger, and I love the texture of the breadcrumb. Breadcrumbs are crispy, bit of ginger. What would you say if somebody suggested this is far too simple for a quarter final of MasterChef? As much as it's simple, the flavours still need to work. The bean starter is tasty but simple. Can she up the ante with her main course of spiced roasted poussin, cumin and aubergine writer, and wheat puffs? This looks fantastically well cooked, beautiful moist bird. The taste of the bird is fantastic. This, however, is been my object of want and need since you started cooking. Ricer, tomatoes, cucumber, yogurt. The flavour of the yogurt and the cucumber and the spice, of course, will always work because people have been doing it for centuries. And if I wasn't sitting here and having to judge MasterChef, I'd be really happy to take that plate away right now, sit on my lap and sit there with a big finger bowl and eat the whole lot, because I think it's beautiful, delicious food. Moist chicken, fiery skin. I like that. Is your cooking refined enough, do you think? Pavine's finishing her meal with date and chocolate phyllo sweets. Will it have the finesse the judges are looking for? Okay. Very dainty flavour. I don't know how I feel about filet pastry, and I don't know how I feel about deep fried desserts. I'm not a sweet tooth person, but I know a man who is. Okay. Lovely. That's a very nice idea. See, I've got such a sweet tooth. You obviously have. I think we often see people's personality on a plate, and I think you are telling us about you with these three plates of food. It's open. It's fun, and it rather shouts at you. What would you bring to a semi-final that somebody else wouldn't, then? I'd go with it, with my whole heart, and a loud laugh. <laughs> Making sure that everything flows together is important, and even if that means that the meal is simple, the important thing is that it tastes good. Matt's kicked off his meal with an inventive starter of parsnip and rosemary soup served with crispy pork crackling. Matt, bit hairy towards the end, wasn't it? Yeah. Why did you lose it, Matt? Um, I think I just came in and started today too, too relaxed and, and then rushed everything right at the end. Every now and again I see on here an absolutely inspired idea. And the idea of serving pork crackling with a bowl of soup, I've got to say, is stunning. I think this is home cooked food at its absolute best. <laughs> it's just a fantastic idea. Looks inspired. So, well done, but that's a pretty weak and insipid bowl of soup for this stage of the game. Yeah. The soup, I think, could be a little bit creamier and a lot more flavoursome. Don't be frightened of parsnips. But this is inspirational. Brilliant. Soup and crackling. The judges loved Matt's crackling. Will his sautéed rabbit with a polenta crust and mushroom risotto go down as well? I love rabbit dearly. I love it, love it, love it. I think it needs to be cooked with gentleness and this looks like it probably could be cooked a little bit less. We've got the rabbit, then a really lovely texture of this polenta on the outside. It's good. Cook a little bit less. They need a little bit longer. You want spaghetti al dente, 
not rice. You're, you're a great cook and I could see it falling apart and my heart went out to you. It's not the end of the world. Now that his under-flavoured soup and overcooked rabbit have let him down, Matt has just one chance left to keep him in the running, his banana, raisin and chocolate tart. Talk to me about your tart, Matt. It's a disaster. I didn't leave enough time at the end to do justice because when it's done right, it's beautiful. OK. OK? Yeah. It's not cut. No. I wasn't going to do it. I was just going to, you know, leave it sort of through it on the plate in the end. And... A few mistakes here today, Matt. Lots of mistakes, yeah. But, you know, I've still got the, the, the wants and the needs to want to want to win, but, you know, wanting and needing, it's not going to help if you can't produce the goods on the day, is it, really? Matt, thank you. It's been a, a real, real pleasure. And your soup and your crackling is fantastic. I'd crawl from here to there on my hands and knees, if that's what I wanted. I, I, I'd do anything um, to, to get myself back in the running for this, to, to, for this competition. Important call this because we send two of you home and we pick a semi-finalist. So give us a bit of time, let us think it through. Thanks guys, shoot. The tasting is over and the judges have a tough decision to make. Which of the three has what it takes to become one of only six MasterChef semi-finalists? It's interesting with Matt because he's got some fantastic ideas. Great idea with the crackling. Ah, oh, fantastic. What a stunningly good idea. Everything, everything I do, everything I think about, is, it all revolves around cooking. John, you should not be making mistakes with soup at this level. No. Rabbit was overcooked, real shame, and his tart was a disaster. He just can't deliver those ideas. He's come to the end of his road, and it's a shame. Let me just talk about Praveen, though. Praveen's food is food that you want to eat because she does care about it. If we weren't here watching her, that grin on her face, you know she would be skipping and singing. That's the sort of cook she is. And it shows on the plate. Praveen cooked well, but she cooked, she cooked home food. If I could speak to John and Greg now, I would say, look at what I've produced for you already. You've liked that. I can do more of that, so give me that chance. Dean stuck his neck out today. Head above parapet, lamb and fennel, not good. I definitely think that I've got a lot to learn, you know. I pretty much, just on the tip of the iceberg at the moment, there's a lot more to come, given the opportunity. I think he will stop making those mistakes, though. We've got to the bottom of where he gets it from. He spends his money on food. That's what he loves to do. Doesn't go out drinking, so he's not in the pub with his mates. His food was presented beautifully. His timing was absolutely right. Let's not get too carried away with the young fella. Neither of us liked his mane, and we were divided over his pud. But we stood there with Paveen and went, mm-mm, nice, 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 all, yeah, nice. Her food was a lot more simple. Would she learn, would she be able to go up to the level that he is at, the sophistication of food? I don't think she necessarily has to go to sophistication, John. Yeah, but this is about MasterChef. This is about taking somebody into a professional environment, into a top, top restaurant professional environment. Well done. Very well done. Two of you have to go home. And our semi finalist is Dean. Congratulations. Well done, Dean. Well done. Well done, guys. I'm devastated, really. Um, I can't help feeling if I'd have cooked better, it should be me in his shoes at the moment. Greg said my food was hearty food, and maybe that went against me when they were making their decision. I never really felt this before about anything. Then again, I, I don't think I've ever wanted anything as much. I think it's going to take a while for it actually to sink in, you know, and I've got an opportunity now. You know, it means a hell of a lot to me. <laughs> Dean has made it to the semi-final. But on Monday, we're back with six new contestants battling it out for the title of MasterChef. If you want to learn more skills from John and Greg, go to bbc.co.uk forward slash food and follow the MasterChef links. There is the promise there of a very good cook. I don't know how to judge you right now. It takes a talented cook without a mess up smoke seven of that.